Today we are talking about bringing out the best in your wife. Proverbs 18 verse 22. Look at that scripture. It says, whoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. The word good thing, good, is from the Hebrew word, Hebrew word to. And this means pleasant, agreeable, excellent. And then wait for this. It also means prosperity. So scripture is saying, whoever finds a wife, finds prosperity. That's what the Bible says. And then the word obtaineth favor, obtaineth is from the Hebrew word pork, meaning to bring out. So whoever, and then it means elicit. So whoever finds a wife, hmm, finds prosperity and brings out favor from the Lord. You cannot treat another person right if you don't understand what is happening to you. If God wants to give you a contract and he wants to give you a job now, and he says that your CV for that job will be how you have treated your wife since you married her. Will you qualify for that job? You see people come up, they get married, they're excited, they spend so much money, travel, do all sorts, bring, gather family, be from introduction up to wedding day, and then just in a few years, they are stabbing each other. One is in the grave, one is in jail. And you're wondering, where did they get it wrong? Not every woman you can marry. It's not every man you can marry. That a man is good does not make him right for you. That a woman is good does not make her right for you. There's a kind of woman you can marry that will bring out the best in your husbandry ministry. There's a kind of man you can marry that will bring out the best in your wifery ministry. There's a woman you marry that will turn you into a wizard. There's a man you marry that will turn you into a witch. So that a man is good does not mean that man is right for you. And that's why I came to tell you this morning, that a woman is good. If you're a young man listening to me, that the woman is good, she's singing in choir, she's the first to recite the, uh, you know, the scripture, she knows everywhere the Bible passage is, she speaks in tongues, everybody knows, does not mean she's right for you. It's very important for us to weigh our values and check out who is right for me based on who I am, where I'm going to, where I am, how I was brought up and where I want to be. A woman may be right for you today, but she may not be right for you in the next 10 years. So don't marry for your present, marry for your future. If your skill, your, your gifting has not influenced your wife's life, career, ministry, dealings, and interpersonal relationship in any way, you have not done well as a husband. As I was preparing for this message, I remember those days that my husband would give me shelter's bottle and ask me stand in front of the mirror, I want you to become bold. You are too timid. And he would tell me, speak in front of the mirror. And then they, when I started ministering in church newly, especially Eston Church gave me the platform to start ministering in church way early. And when I started ministering in church, when I get home, my husband would sit me down, you did well, but this, 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 like a student who is in school. He practically mentored me through every stage. There were times when I had conferences. I remember the first conference I was called to, I was, I was really shaking. And I said, I don't know. I, and then he said, calm down. And he took me through every stage. And he made me repeat the entire process in front of him over and over and over and over before the day. And I gained confidence. So before you begin to compare your wife with another person, ask yourself, can I pay the price that husband is paying? If your daughter marries a man like you, will her marriage be blissful? Because if your daughter loves you enough, you are un unconsciously conditioning her for a kind of man she will marry. She begins to look out for a man like you unconsciously. Because she loves you. How do you bring out the best in your wife? First one is that your wife is your first assignment. Your wife is an assignment God gave to you during creation. He brought out the man from the ground, but he brought out the woman from the man, and he made her his wife. Genesis 2, verse 21 to 24. Your wife is your first seed, and how that seed grows depends on where it is planted. Because the woman you're married to today, and you're complaining about, somebody else will marry that woman and do a wonderful job with her, whoever she is. Whoever she is, however she is, how no matter how terrible she is, somebody else will marry that woman, understand her code, and then do a wonderful job with her. So what's my encouragement for us? Let's read the scripture, Genesis 2, 2 verse 21 to 24. It says, and the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And then verse 23 says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Can we see 24? Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I will still refer to that verse 24 again later. So invest in your wife's health. You know, sometimes we don't understand the value of health. If that woman... If you don't invest in that woman's health, when she's down in the future, you have to pay for it. 
Invest in your wife's health. Invest in her emotions. Invest in her career. Invest in her vision and invest in everything you can invest in in her life to make her a better person. Because your wife is a reflection of you. If they take your wife's before and after picture, what would it look like? How well have you managed that woman? And then the second point I want to share here is that you make your wife your priority. Can we see Leviticus 18 verse, 6, verse 8? Leviticus 18 verse 8. Your wife is your first priority. Verse 8 of Leviticus 18 says, The nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. That means your, 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 wife, your father's wife's nakedness is your father's own. See the next, see what verse 16 says again. He said, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. So if you go around embarrassing your wife everywhere, it's your own embarrassment because she is you. There is no difference between both of you. Until you see your wife as a part of you, you may never have a blissful home. If you keep seeing her as someone else, someone there, a wife, a sister, somebody far, not a part of you, you may never experience bliss and happiness. Because genuine happiness comes from treating the other person just the way you would have loved yourself to be treated. Praise the Lord. And then you know the word husband is an interesting word. How many of us have heard of the word husbandry? They taught us in our Greek, animal husbandry, right? Crop husbandry, you know? What does it mean? Let's look at the meaning of that word. So the word husbandry means the care, cultivation, and breeding of crops and animals. So if we want to relate this, of course, it was, the word husbandry was taken from the word husband. And the word husband was taken from the word house and bond, meaning to keep the family together, to keep the house together. So you are going through a, or is it a now, a husbandry ministry. How are you carrying out this ministry? That's why I say your wife is a seed. And how you treat her determines how she would come out for you. You see men, they go out, they are laughing, they are playing. Everybody's thinking they are the best. But they get home, they don't smile. There are men like that, they don't smile at home. They go out, laugh, play, gist, everything. And then the moment they get home, good morning, good night. And then when, when the wife goes out and they say, ah, your husband. Hey, wow. She's, <laughs> These people don't know this man. <laughs> because again, it is only your spouse, whether you are a man or woman, it is only your spouse that knows if you are a Christian or not. You can pretend sometimes to your children, but I even realize they are wise at these days. They can't they can code it. They can decode it. But the people living in your house, your spouse can tell the kind of Christian that you are. So I came here to encourage us today. Please help your wife have a me time. Help your wife have a me time. Bring your wife up to, bring, begin, bring your wife up to the level of girlfriend, not wife. Because when we, I think that word wife makes us expect so much. But bring her to the level of girlfriend. Let me, I just want to make this girl happy. I just want to make this girl, I just want to help her enjoy peace. I just want to help her, uh, you know, I just want to make her a good person. You know, help your wife have a me time. Some women are not organized. So they don't understand how to prioritize. Some women don't know how to plan their timetable. Some women are not so productive. Help her instead of complaining. There's something my husband used to do. Even though I noticed he has stopped it. There's something he used to do there. And then he would, if I take a nap, I'm a very busy person. In fact, we had a child come over the house last week. And then he told, I heard him telling my sons, See, your parents are very busy people. We are very busy people. If you don't live in our house, you, you won't know. We are extremely busy. And then I'm a very busy person. And then sometimes I catch one hour to take a nap. I remember those, I remember those times. He has stopped, but he's hearing now, so he's also listening. And my husband would tell the kids, don't go there, mommy's sleeping. He would actually not allow anybody to enter the room. He would be in the sitting room, making sure nobody's entering the room to come out. What do you want? Don't go, your mommy's sleeping. Then my phone rings, bring it, bring it, bring it. She'll wake up. And I'm like... I'm hearing those things, but I can see a man who really wants me to take that rest. These things minister to us. And that's why I want to encourage us to do, help your wife in any way you can. And then number three, know our love language and practice it. Ephesians 5 verse 22 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. But he went further because we don't remember to continue that scripture. He went further to say, he even agreed to die on its behalf. And we are not saying go on the cross. Jesus already did that. But we are saying give up some level of satisfaction. Discomfort yourself sometimes to give your wife comfort. To speak a love language, when was the last time you gave her a meaningful hug without expecting anything? You did not want anything. You just hugged her and left her. So men, now if you do it, your wife will be so shocked. She won't want to accept it because we have never done it. As you are doing, she's wondering, ah, what, what did I do? Okay, what do you want to say? Say it. Because she has never seen it. When was the last time you held her hands while people were walking? When was the last time you took her out to the movies? 
Let's even leave the movies. It's expensive, Abby. When was the last time you held your wife's hand and took her on a stroll? They have some very simple acts. I see my husband do that a lot. And if you know my husband, you know that he's trying. Come this world 10 times, I'll marry him again 10 times. So. I'm praying every day that my daughter should marry a man like him because she'll be fine. Yeah, she'll be fine. You know? But we have our own. But I'm saying, something, sometimes we are eating and he just puts, fills water for me and gives me take. And I'm wondering, how, oh, why? But he does those very little things that counts. Very, very little things that count. When was the last time you said I love you to your wife? When was the last time you thanked her for everything she's doing for the family? When was the last time you sent her a sweet sex message or a WhatsApp message? When was the last time you called her during the day just to check on her, on her and how she's doing? Not to ask her, is there Gary? Are you back? Have you picked the kids? When will you be back? You just call to find out how is your day going? When was the last time? These are the things you did when you were not married to her. I'm glad my husband is hearing before we got married. He used to take me to the beach and I was like, ah, this marriage goes sweet, die you. <laughs> I think I've only gone to the beach once in 14 years. But he's hearing, that's why they said, it. that's why he said, it. only once in 14 years. He even promised me that he was going to take me to some places. I have not gone yet, I'm still waiting. But we are trying. Some people are speaking for him, praise the Lord. So when was the last time you took her out for that weekend getaway? Oh, my husband is very good at that. We, like I told you, we are very busy. Sometimes all of a sudden we notice that we are cranky, we are irritated by any small thing. You <laughs> just say, you know what, babe, we need to take. Let's go. And then God is faithful. See, when you have it in your heart, God will put the money in your hands. And then he will just say, you know what, next week we are going away, three days. Once we just notice that it's like everything is, <laughs> but we say, something is wrong, we know, we understand, it's the pressure. You know the, the bad thing, or the one of the challenges of both of us being entrepreneurs is that sometimes I go through very serious business pressure and he's also going through the same. So he's supposed to help me. I'm supposed to help him, but two of us, I don't want to hear your own. As he's narrating his own, I'm telling him how my own is worse than his own. <laughs> and then, sometimes this can cause a lot of tension in the home. Just take a break. Then the fourth thing I'm going to say, okay, I have less than, I have about five minutes left. So the fourth thing I'm going to say is take a break. That's what I just talked about. Now, when you notice you're getting irritated, at it, you just take a break. And then even you as a man, maybe after this meeting, take a break and ask yourself some salient questions. Why did I marry this woman? What motivates her? What upsets her? A woman has complained about the same thing for 15 years. She's still complaining. She's still complaining. She's still, and you're not asking yourself, if she has said this thing over and over, what can I do about it? What makes her unhappy? What makes her happy? What changed her? Some people say, my wife has changed. But what changed her? Why did this change happen? Some of the changes women go through is actually very natural and biological. But we don't know because we are not finding out. And then, you know, you get to hear this complaint a lot. Men complain about this one a lot. Every year. In fact, whenever you, any couple, like they, whenever they're having crisis and they appear before the table, the very qu first question I ask when we start going into our conversation is, when last people have sex? Are you here three months? Six months? One month ago? I'm here to meet one couple that they have a good sex life and they're having major marital issues. I'm here to meet one. Because this thing is biological and I'm going to show you. Some people have said, oh, she's always turning me down. She's always turning Have you made an effort to understand how the woman's system is designed? Some women, maybe you're hearing this for the first time, some women only feel like having sex five times in a month. And that's during our ovulation period. Some women, five, six, seven, eight, on the 14th day, are they, but some women, only five times in a month. And an average month has 30 days, and you are blaming her. It means that the remaining 25 days for it to happen, it's not that she won't feel like, but somebody has to bring her into the mood. And like an author said, he said, I can't remember his name, and he said, four plays everything you do during the day. So, five days, you touch her, she follow. But the remaining days, you will start since morning. I'm not making it tough for the men. Like I said, they are going to also talk to the women next week. And I'm sure this issue will also be addressed. Praise the Lord. So, the phases of our menstrual cycle affects our libido. And we need the men to know this. The phases of our menstrual cycle affects our libido. Our libido rises during ovulation, and other days may require an extra effort that the man will need to put in to bring us into the mood. Pay attention to your wife's body and how it works. Discover our own pattern and be deliberate about helping her because you are in this together. Praise the Lord. And then the fifth one, have realistic expectation about your wife. You know, um, I met a couple once 
was in church here, but they're no longer in church. They're no longer here, but they were in church here. And then the man came to me once and said, oh, my wife, uh, she makes me late every Sunday morning. You need, to, you need to talk to my wife. She needs to be coming to church early. Are you not the one I'm always meeting in church? She makes me late. And I said, okay. And then I called you, man, and one of those is I told her I wanted to have a meeting with her. And we started talking. What makes you late on Sunday? Are there things you can do on Saturday? We started breaking down the chores. And then it was in the course of doing that that we realized that what the man does, actually is the same woman that is, is complaining about that wakes him up. Uh, she's the one that wakes him up. Then when she wakes him up, she wake him up like four times, but he will eventually wake up. And then when he now eventually wakes up, after four times of going to wake him up, he will go straight to the bathroom. The water is already, there's already warm water. Go straight to the bathroom, takes his bath, take, wears his clothes, enters the car and starts doing pum, 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 and they have three children. And he's saying the wife is coming late to church. And it's the woman that woke him up. Oh. And that same man wants to eat before leaving. That same man wants the children to be in church. And he wants the wife to be early. Ah, let me not say, may somebody do it to your daughter. Uh -huh. I did not say it. I said, let me not say it. No, look at it. Take your, if your wife were to be your daughter, will you like what you're doing to her? Is that, uh, so some people make some comparisons that, and then I called the man, I said, see, about you, Steph, look him now. If now you're picking. We looked at it together and then, before you know it, okay, let's share it. They share the responsibilities. And they started coming to church early. It's that simple. So we can walk around some of the challenges we have. So if you want a beautiful wife, there's a responsibility. You have to spend money. You have to take care of her. Let's assume you don't even have the money. You can help her relieve stress. It's not every time you spend money. You can take off some of the things that she does. Help her fix dinner. It will not change your complexion. Uh -uh. Is it bad? She went to work. She came back. Food is ready. Will your complexion change? It can't change now. Hey, Joe, we are begging you. And you keep comparing us with our mothers. But you forgot that our mothers didn't used to go through Todd Mellon Bridge. Our mothers knew the time to leave home to the farm and they know when they will return because there's no traffic on the road. So they could plan. Our mother had seasons where they couldn't go to the farm because the weather did not allow it. So they can rest and take a vacation. We don't have vacation. We work 24 hours of the day, all days of the year. And we have to support you with school fees. We have to support you with house rent. We have to take care of bills we are not telling you about. There are so many things we are doing we are not telling you about. We have families to take care of. See, if you take care of your wife's family, you are doing it for your wife. You are making her have respect in the eyes of our people. First Corinthians 16 verse 14. First Corinthians 16 verse 14 says, do everything in love. When was the last time you checked on your parents-in-law? When was the last time you put a call through to them? I understand you don't have money, but 1,000 naira recharge card will not kill you. These things you're not doing for them. You are doing for your spouse. If you do these things, see, bed matters, you will not be begging. How will you be begging? Who can have a good man and throw him away? It's not possible. It's not possible. So stop the comparison. Stop comparing your wife with the other woman. Because that woman you are comparing your wife with, some people are quick to say, be there, your mates are this and that. Your mate, that person you are comparing your wife with, she has not cooked for her husband in two months because she's too busy. The man fixes the food, makes sure she eats it, calls to check on her. His own is that he's doing his husbandry ministry, helping her fulfill her ministry. So before you compare, ask your wife, ask yourself, have you paid the price? There was a time I had, of course, usual pressure. My husband was a bit free then. Now he doesn't do it anymore. Like I said, there are plenty of things he doesn't do again, but he's doing new ones that he was not doing before. So that's why I'm not complaining, yes. <laughs> so then, I remember he brought this book and said, he has some books in his library. Sometimes he would just pick one and say, for this season, you need to read this book. You know, and he will follow me up till I read it. And that particular time, he gave me that book. You need to read this book. You need to read this book. You need to read. And then that particular day, he came to me and said, you know what? You keep complaining about this, but you have refused to read this book. I said, I don't have time. You see how busy I am. He said, oh, yeah. Be, walk, be cooking. I'll be reading it. And he sat on his stool, and he was reading the book to me. I asked, Are you listening? I will ask you questions. I said, I'm listening. So before you compare, have you paid the price? It is work, oh. See, your wife can be anything you want her to be. Your wife is a seed in your hands. Plant it where you want. Put the manure you want, and you will get the results that you want. Praise the Lord. So stop the comparison. And then if you are here, you are a man. Even if I stop here, I'm okay. If you are a man, you don't have a job. Please, I'm using God's name to beg you. I'm standing in front of the altar. Please, go and get a job. Your wife does not know how to tell you that she's tired because she's a Christian. She's very tired but she doesn't know how to tell you. She's wearing out. Before you know it, she will look older than her age. That's why people get to age 50, they have high blood pressure. They have all kinds of ailments. Now the money has come, they cannot enjoy it. Now you have money, but they cannot enjoy it. Please, if you are a man, if you don't have a job, please, anything you can find to sell, 
Buy it. Even if it's this face mask, please go and do it. When you do it, the God that sees that you are doing it because you want to help your wife will prosper that thing. Because that thing is not your source. God is your source. But God wants you to obey this husbandry ministry he has given you. And as you do, you would notice that the kind of favor you will see is not regular. But please, if you are listening to me, and you are a young person, you are not married, you don't have a job, and you are looking for a girl that will bring connection, please go and get a job. Have mercy on your destiny. Have a constant income, no matter how small. Let it be very constant. Please. I encourage us men. Now, let me, if I, yeah, I'm, if service has closed, if I stop here, Otiwa, okay, I'm very okay. She's not refusing you sex. I want us to see this, please. When a woman is stressed, her body begins to prepare her for a response. You know, when something happens to you, you have this um, fight or flight mode, right? So when a woman is stressed, her body begins to prepare her for that response, fight or flight. And this increases the demand for cortisol in her body. A cortisol production in our body. Now, what does this do as it's happening? It's reducing our desire for sex. The moment the production of cortisol is taking place, from the stress that she's going through, her sex drive is reducing almost at the same pace, if not faster. So, <laughs> our body, eh, when she's going through sex, is hijacked from her. Her sex hormone is hijacked from her without her permission. Our body has hijacked her sex hormone because of her strength. It has hijacked it because of school fees. She too did not know how it happened. Her body did it. So what am I saying? When you stress your wife, you are reducing, you're reducing your chances of a great time in bed. As you are stressing, I just tell yourself, I'm reducing my chances. But when you help her, there's, there's this feeling that comes with wanting to reward a man for all that he has done. If you constantly deposit in your wife's emotional bank account, you cannot appear at the bank and your check will bounce. So every single day, deposit as much as you can. And then the next point I have here, pray for your wife. Some people don't know that they need to pray for their wife. Pray for her business, pray for her career, pray for the things she's doing, pray for her spiritual life, pray for her to become a better woman. And above all, work as a team. As life is putting you through the tides of life, make sure you people are on the same page. Go through it together. Yes, life is filled with up and ups and downs, but make sure you are going through this together. Some people confide in a friend instead of their wife. How do you get wisdom? They just go about. You say your wife does not have wisdom. How can she have wisdom when she has not practiced decision making? You don't allow her to take part in decision making. You want her to have wisdom. You learn from you learn by experience. As you are taking decision, you make you make mistake today. Tomorrow you know better. But you have never given her a chance to take decision. And you are saying she's not wise. It's your fault. You need grace, so marriage is grace. And I pray that God is going to give us that grace in the name of Jesus. I tell people a lot, I say, God has given I and my husband the grace to make the most of our differences and then to make the most of our similarities. Somehow, we've been able to make the best of our differences and then we've been able to make the most of our, sim of our um, similarities. There are things that I do for my husband that a regular wife will not do for her husband because it's not our role. But I do it because I know my husband can't. He just can't. The same way there are things he does for me because he knows I can't. There are places where we are similar. Some people saw a video online last week and they were pushing it on the leading ladies platform. And then I realized yeah, those, those are the places where we are similar. We like to make jokes, we like to do funny things, and we do it together. And it just keeps us going. And I pray that God is going to keep you happy in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is good to take great pictures during anniversary. But it is greater to make every anniversary a celebration of improvement in your marriage. And I trust that God will help you in the name of Jesus.